Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Friends, last time I made a video on Ginkgo Bioworks, I promised that we'll take a closer look at their AAV uh, for gene therapy business. That's what I'm doing in this video. At the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of this platform, what exactly Ginkgo Bioworks is offering, who their competitors are, and then that will inform you about the valuation uh, for this part of the business for Ginkgo Bioworks, how competitive it is or how unique it is or how common it is. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Let's go to the Ginkgo Bioworks uh, homepage for uh, AAV for gene therapies. Here we are in the homepage for AAV services for gene therapy in Ginkgo Bioworks. And last time we visited this, I said that they have three services, capsid engineering, payload engineering, and AAV production. I looked up uh, Stride Bio and uh, it seems to me that STRV is the uh, is their platform that um, uh, Ginkgo Bioworks took over and the STRV platform basically has got the ability to keep on manipulating the capsid, uh, trying various iterations and mutations uh, to give it different qualities. Those qualities could range uh, from where it goes to in the body and uh, also some uh, m modification to avoid uh, antibodies uh, which could neutralize it so that it can persist for longer. So based on that, uh, you can see STRV5, 4, 1. So these are all the uh, unique identifier for a particular type of uh, AAV that uh, Ginkgo Biovox offers, which goes to a particular part of the body. Uh, so based on the therapy that one is doing, one could select a vehicle uh, from what is offered by Ginkgo Bioworks. So that's the way I understand this. And um, I would like to talk to you about AAV itself because when I was doing the study on this topic, my question was what exactly is AAV and uh, what are the problems associated with it? Because I have always had the impression that the industry is trying to move away from AAV and more into LNP and other delivery mechanisms. So uh, what I found out was that AAV is not adenovirus, but it's adjacent. It does not have an envelope, but only a capsid. So many of these uh, viruses, they have uh, an envelope and a membrane on top of it. The membrane is derived from the host cell and, and that is called as the uh, envelope. And uh, when it comes to AAV, AAV does not have an envelope. It just has a, a capsid. And it is safe because it cannot replicate without the help of adenovirus. Uh, because uh, AAV does not pro possess the necessary genes to create a suitable environment in the cell uh, in order to do transcription. The other thing about adeno-associated virus is that it has a DNA. So uh, when uh, it is deployed for uh, gene therapy, uh, let us say it's uh, deployed for uh, uh, using CRISPR-Cas9 uh, to make modifications in various cells. So uh, the DNA of the adeno-associated virus is scooped out and in its place the uh, uh, Cas9 uh, molecule is put there and also the guide RNA is put there. And if uh, there is a space which is going to be very difficult, um, then it could uh, put a template based on which the repair can be done after the cut is performed. Suffice to say, AAV can deliver the payload and not cause any harm by itself as it will only be an empty uh, capsid. And that's the reason why AAV is uh, preferred. And how is it used? It's used to replace part of a defective gene uh, to deploy CRISPR-Cas9. Those are the two use cases we have. And there are constraints. Uh, in its original form, it targets uh, chromosome 19 in humans. And its reach is limited primarily to liver, muscle, and central nervous system in its original form. However, what Ginkgo does is it's able to engineer uh, using the STRV platform and uh, make change to the changes to the characteristics of the AAV uh, so that it can be used for different types of payloads, payload optimization or destination optimization uh, or those kind of things uh, are being done by Ginkgo Bioworks with that platform. The AAV is quite reliable and can stay in the body long term uh, and without integrating with the host DNA. There are several factors to consider that make chromosome 19 a specific integration site preferable in gene therapy application because uh, if, we, if the gene uh, therapy was uh, delivered somewhere else in some other chromosome, uh, there is a, a possibility 
uh, that different chromosomal uh, regions have varying levels of chromatin accessibility and chromatin accessibility allows for gene expression. So choosing a location with appropriate regulatory elements can enhance the effectiveness of the therapy and at that location if uh, uh, the AAV drops its uh, uh, genetic payload and it integrates with the uh, uh, gene out there, uh, the chromosome out there then uh, it would be able to perform optimally but if it was uh, deposited in a place where the chromatin levels are low then it won't be performing as optimally so that's what uh, uh, i understand from everything that i have read so far and while avoiding essential gene disruption is crucial even non-essential genes can have unforeseen consequences when disrupted therefore um, deviating from the normal um, uh, path for uh, uh, AAV of going to chromosome 19 involves a lot of work to be done uh, in order to make sure that the payload is integrated uh, properly at the destination. Uh, integrating the payload uh, ra randomly across different chromosomes increases the risk of disrupting unknown regulatory regions or genes with subtle yet important functions. Chromosome 19, particularly the AAVS1 site, has been extensively studied for AAV integration. Researchers have a better understanding of the consequences and potential risks associated with integration at this specific location compared to random integration events across the entire genome. Even if the delivered gene itself doesn't disrupt another gene directly, its expression pattern or product interactions could lead to unintended consequences depending on the integration site. Understanding the local environment and potential interactions with neighboring genes at the integration site can help minimize off-target effects. Therefore, while theoretically possible, delivering the payload to random chromosomal location, uh, locations introduces greater uncertainties and potential risks compared to targeting a well-characterized and controlled site like AAVS1 on chromosome 19. So at this juncture, I want to go back to the chart that I had shown you uh, in Ginkgo Bioworks and explain the importance of what I just mentioned to you. So now, if you look at uh, this chart, we have STRV5 CNS uh, tropism, that is central nervous system tropism. So that AAV is going to go here. And we have STRV84, which is targeting two different locations, and so on and so forth. So now, they have a whole bunch of um, uh, AAVs, uh, which have specific properties in terms of tropism, where it goes. Now... Uh, depending on the kind of uh, therapy that is being done, uh, the changes to the uh, genes will have to be done. Now, uh, that becomes a very important consideration. What exactly is the therapy and uh, what changes is it going to do uh, in the uh, DNA? And um, uh, therefore, what is it adjacent to will also be important. So even though a particular site may be benign for a particular therapy, the same may not work for another therapy. Therefore, uh, each one of those will have to be validated. And you also saw how um, uh, difficult it would be to go to unstudied uh, chromosomes in the body and unstudied locales in those chromosomes. Therefore, uh, now in light of that, you can appreciate that partial validation in mice and in vitro for these uh, strains has happened, that is preclinical. And then, extensive validation in non-human primates has been done for these. So these are now able to move into um, uh, clinical trials as and when uh, FDA approves the quality of uh, the data that has been received. And these still need a lot of a long way to go before it can be tried out on non-human uh, primates. And it's after that that uh, Ginkgo Bioworks will be able to differentiate itself uh, from other competitors in the field uh, in manufacturing uh, AAVs. So what is the business opportunity in AAV? So producing high quality clinical grade AAV vectors can be complex and expensive. This can lead to limited availability and higher costs for AAV based therapies. And there is a scalability challenge also, scaling up AAV production to meet demands of large clinical trials and potential commercialization can be challenging. Stringent quality control is required. Regulatory agencies require strict quality control measures to ensure the safety and uh, efficacy of AAV vectors. 
adding complexity and potentially contributing to supply limitations. However, it's important to note, uh, to note that industry is actively working on overcoming these challenge, challenges and part of the industry is Ginkgo Bioworks. And there are advancements in AAV manufacturing technologies which are being explored to improve efficiency, scalability and cost effectiveness. And contract manufacturing organizations or CMOs are increasing in numbers and they specialize in AAV production and helping in increasing the overall capacity and availability. The other aspect is uh, immune response. Some individuals may have pre-existing immunity to AAV due to prior exposure, potentially hindering the effectiveness of AAV-based therapies in these individuals. So immune response to AAV capsid will have to be managed. So again, uh, engineering would be uh, required there, trying out different combinations would be required there, and that's where Ginkgo Bioworks will have an advantage. The body's immune system can recognize and neutralize the AAV capsid, potentially reducing the number of AAV vectors reaching target cells. Researchers are addressing these challenges through several approaches, and Ginkgo's approach is to use its library and make modifications to the gene genome and try to create a new capsid. New AAV capsid variants with reduced immunogenicity are being developed to evade pre-existing immunity and improve delivery efficiency. And uh, there are some immune suppression strategies that, that is being used. In some cases, short-term immune suppression strategies might be used to enable successful AAV vector delivery because all that it has to do is to deliver the uh, gene payload and then whatever happens to the AAV capsid doesn't matter at all. So overall, while supply and quality issues and the potential for immune response post challenges, AAV remains the most widely used vector for gene therapy due to its several uh, advantages. And um, I would say that uh, AAV is generally considered as the minimal uh, risk uh, vector for insertional uh, mut uh, mutagenesis or replication within the host. And uh, in terms of uh, long-term expression, AAV integrates its payload into the host genome, enabling long-term expression of the delivered gene. And that's exactly what uh, gene therapies require. And um, I would also say that the good thing is that Ginkgo Bioworks is up the food chain uh, in the AAV supply landscape, although not as a direct manufacturer. Of course, they have also mentioned that they would manufacture AAV. That's where the run of the mill competition is there. But uh, Ginkgo Bioworks is also up in the food chain. They primarily focus on the different aspect of AAV development process. Uh, Ginkgo Bioworks is not a traditional AAV manufacturer. Instead, they function as a platform technology company offering services and resources to facilitate AAV development for other companies involved in gene therapy. And Ginkgo provides various services and capabilities uh, related to AAV, including uh, access to their library of well-characterized cap capsid designs. The ones that you saw in the chart, they are the examples, allowing companies to choose suitable capsids uh, for their specific gene therapy applications. They use their expertise in cell engineering to optimize the production of AAV vectors by improving plasmid design and cell line uh, performance. They offer access to their automated foundry infrastructure, which can be used to rapidly scale up AAV production efficiency. And uh, I would like to give you some examples of indirect competitors to uh, Ginkgo Bioworks uh, in the AAV development space. There is this company called as uh, GenePool, uh, Alnilam Pharmaceuticals, which offers AAV capsid libraries for screening and selection. It provides expertise in AAV vector design and optimization. It focuses on high throughput AAV vector development capabilities. Then we have Vector Biolabs, which offers contract research services for AAV vector development, uh, including vector design, production, and characterization. Provides expertise in AAV manufacturing, uh, process development, and optimization. Uh, focuses on uh, CGMP, that is current good manufacturing practice, compliant AAV vector production for clinical trials. And also we have another company called Brammer Bio, B-R-A-M-M-E-R. Uh, Brammer Bio offers custom AAV development services, including capsid engineering, vector optimization and production, provides expertise in AAV vector design, manufacturing and preclinical testing. It focuses on personalized AAV development solutions for specific gene therapy solution. And we have one more company which I can mention, which is Abiome, which offers AAV capsid libraries and custom engineering services for AAV vector development, provides expertise in AAV capsid design optimization and high throughput screening, focuses on developing novel AAV capsids with improved properties for gene therapy applications. And there are multiple cell engineering companies 
Several companies like Millipore Sigma and Thermo Fisher Scientific offer cell line engineering tools and expertise. While not directly focused on AAV, their expertise can be applied to optimize the cell lines used for AAV production, potentially competing with Ginkgo cell engineering services in this specific application. So to conclude this whole big story, I think we now have a better understanding of how the Ginkgo Bioworks gene therapy business uh, is uh, structured, what exactly it does. So I think while it is higher in the food chain, it still has competitors doing exactly what it is doing. And the question is whether the foundry is an intelligent branding or is it truly something unique and superior to what the competition offers. And that's a different question for another day. We'll dwell into it sometime later. But I would like to know from you, please let me know what you think of DNA after watching this video. Did it turn out better than you expected or were you, expect, uh, were you disappointed on understanding what exactly DNA does uh, in the AAV gene therapy space and that it is not as unique in this business as one might have thought? Please let me have your comment. That's all for now. Bye for now.